Crispy Drip, thank you for a $5 super chat. My Meteor 75 yaws whenever I pull out of a dive. How can I fix this? Um, what you're describing is called yaw washout. Yaw washout occurs when one of the rear motors reaches saturation. In other words, the motor's at 100% and it can't spin any faster. And then the quad skids, if you will, or washes out. This is a common thing with very small quadcopters. And basically what it means is you are di you're, you're flying too aggressive. You're too much for the quad. You have to dial it back. If you do big dives with tiny quads, a lot of times you get y'all washout. The answer is don't do big dives with tiny quads. One thing you can do is when you're diving, keep the throttle raised a little bit. Don't lower the throttle all the way down and keep the quad kind of moving forward instead of falling straight down. A lot of times that'll fix it. But the answer is you need to fly around it. Could you get different motors, like higher KV motors, bigger motors, different props? Maybe. Sometimes different props will help, but a lot of times you, you just need to fly around it, and that's what I think pro pilots are doing. Um, Jafriamel says, I'm new to Express LRS. What baud rate should I be using? The TX-16S and the RP 1.5 inch drone. Thank you for a $10 super chat. Um, you should use the fastest baud rate that you can without getting errors. So the baud rate needs to be high enough to support the packet rate. The baud rate is how fast the radio talks to the module, okay? So if the packet rate goes up to a point where it hits the ceiling of the communication between the radio and the module, then then you won't be able to go any faster. And in fact, the radio will detect that and will not let you, will it not let you go, will it force a baud rate to go up? Or will it not let you select a different packet rate? I think that the radio knows when the baud rate is too low. I can't remember how that exactly works. But what you wanna do is, you wanna set the baud rate as high as you can, okay? Five mega, I believe it's five mega baud is the max. And you want to look at the error counter. So there's an error counter next to the baud rate. And if the error counter is going one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, counting up, 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 then you need to lower the baud rate. Something is wrong. That's the short version. How can I wire a black box logger to the Happy Model 2G4 flight controller? Well, let's look. So a black box logger just wires up to the uh, UART. So let's look at this flight controller and see how many UARTs are available. A lot of times on these little AIO flight controllers, there aren't a lot of UARTs. Let me just zoom this out real quick. What we really need is Uh, wiring diagram. There is no wiring diagram. Surely there must be. A Happy Model website is really frustrating. Like, if you go to the support page, support manual. Oh, damn it. That is not what I meant to do. Support manuals. It's just a blog style layout, chronological. So like, how do you find the actual product that you want? It's, it's, I don't, I don't know if there's a better way to do that. Uh, uh, so let's try this. Let's just try searching for manual. <sighs> nope. This is really, this is very frustrating. Why is the manual not linked on the damn product page? Is it? Feels like, feels like half of my, uh, here we go. Maybe this is what I want. Feels like half my live streams are complaining about websites and documentation. Um, boy, it does not look like there's any spare UARTs, does it? It does not look like there's any spare UARTs. Oh, how about on this side? Oh, that's better. Okay, so what do we got? Zoom in. Um, we've got TX2 and RX2. That's UART2. 
We got TX1 and RX1, that's UART1. That's good. The receiver is built in, and it's an SPI-based receiver, so that is not going to conflict with any of your UARTs. You're good to go there. You got a receiver. Um, hopefully, one of those two UARTs is free, either TX2 and RX2 or TX1 and RX1. So then uh, your uh, black box logger is going to have a TX and an RX, and a five volt in the ground, and it's gonna just wire up like any other UART based peripheral RX to TX, TX to RX, five volt in ground, and away you go. Yeah, hopefully, that has been uh, what you were looking for. On current Betaflight firmware, should I have permanent air mode enabled or disabled? Flying freestyle with a three inch quad. Thank you for a five dollar super chat, Bryce. Um, I think that I, I have it enabled all the time. So I would say keep it enabled. Uh, there are specific reasons why you might want to disable air mode, such as if you do a lot of perches or, or if you land or if you do skids and you don't want the quad bouncing, then you disable air mode just for that. Um, uh, here's a question from Slarda Bartfast on the Discord. Thank you for being a patron, Slarda Bartfast. Have you ever considered doing a beginner wing build? Many of us have only done drones and not wings. Uh, I know there are others, but that, but JB instructions the best. That's very kind of you to say. Um, I have thought about getting uh, some wing stuff, maybe just for fun to branch out. And, you know, um, I couldn't give you a date. It is something that has crossed my mind, though. I'll say that. Um, uh, what's the best way to secure the UFL antenna to the VTX? Thank you for a $2 super chat, Comic Sniper. Um, Comic Sniper, the, the best way is to buy a VTX that has retention. Now, I know that's not always going to be an option, but many VTX come with a little retention bar or some other way of retaining the UFL, and those are very valued uh, by me. I value those a lot. If you have a VTX that has a UFL that doesn't have retention, then what I like to do is rotate the UFL 180 degrees so the wire comes back up over the board and then use a zip tie to re retain the wire or maybe even tape around the whole thing. If you do that, you want to be really careful because on some pieces of electronics, when you rotate the UFL around, the, the metal of the UFL connector will touch like a capacitor on the board or something, and that can cause problems. So you got to be careful that that's not happening. But that's what I'll do is I'll bend it 180 degrees back so the wire comes back over the board and I'll tape it down or zip tie it down.